what a time we're living in right now. And it's an opportunity, it's a deep time for, for all of the Dharma, it feels like. And it makes me really, really grateful to have communities like this and to have practices that help to support me. Um, and I thought tonight we would explore what it's like to sit with difficulty, with challenge, with uncertainty, right? It's something that, that is really, really useful to cultivate and feels like it's really important for us right now. Um, these times are not necessarily pleasant. These times where we face challenge, where we face difficulty, um, we wouldn't necessarily wish it to come upon us. Yet, if you've ever gone through, come through a difficult situation, right, you usually encounter some degree of growth, right? It is also an opportunity. It's also an opportunity for us to learn, for us to grow. Um, and I was inspired by some words by the deep ecologist and Buddhist scholar, Joanna Macy. What she says is approaching difficulty with curiosity opens us to the unsuspected deep well of patience and diligence within us. Patience and diligence within us. That we do have this deep well. And oftentimes what is required to open up that deep well, to help us to see it, to access it, is actually difficulty, is the challenges that we face in our lives. And we're in a period of time where I started playing around with this notion of how do we dance with challenge? Like how do we see a challenge as a dance partner? And what, what are the moves of this dance? And what is the music of this dance? So I started to come up with these different analogies that a lot of the music, this kind of mellifluous and supportive element of any dance, um, is really kind of like the elements of compassion and loving kindness. That we need to have this environment of love and compassion to be able to do the work, to be able to open up to things that, that we don't really want to face. All right, so we're dancing to the music of loving kindness and compassion. And the moves kind of move and vacillate between these two polar opposites of what I'm calling a kind of active hope and deep rest. That we need both, right? That we can show up, that we can feel compelled and inspired to do work for good change, for growth. But we also need rest. We also need a break from time to time. We need time to feel, time to process, time to be with what is there, All right? So we'll be playing around with practice and with our conversation tonight with, with both of those elements, finding this dance to the love, loving kindness and compassionate music. Um, for the element of deep rest, maybe some of you have heard of um, the NAP ministry, founded by Trisha Hersey. Um, they've been very inspired by, by the, um, the work that she is doing. And um, she frames nap, napping and rest as resistance, right? as an act of resistance, and as absolutely 100% necessary, and something that is not valued by our culture today. So I read a quote by Trisha Hersey that Think is really brilliant. We must believe we are worthy of rest. We are worthy of rest and we need it. We don't have to earn it. It is our birthright. It is one of our most ancient and primal needs. Right? We've been so removed from that, from that need, from, and we have the desire maybe, but we feel guilty about it, right? But we do need, we need rest. And rest is how we can feel recharged, how we can feel rejuvenated, and how we can continue to show up for our lives, especially in times that are difficult, especially in times that are challenging. So we'll be diving into this topic, dancing with challenge, with deep rest and active hope. And we'll start with a little bit of practice. One of the um, 
One of the practices that I think is really useful for exploring this kind of dance is um, a Tibetan practice called Tonglen. Anybody heard of it? Yeah, Tonglen. Um, so it's, it means taking and sending. And it's often done in tandem with breath and how I guide it tonight, where it's the invitation of using breath as a way of feeling into this. And the idea is that you'll breathe in. It's actually counterintuitive something that you wouldn't necessarily do. You're kind of like holding any pain and suffering close. You're allowing yourself to get near to it, to take it in. That you hold, you breathe in any pain and suffering in your life. You also breathe in pain and suffering of others. And then the exhale is releasing and sending out for yourself, for, for all, this idea of peace and healing that we can use this, any suffering or pain as kind of like, we can have an alchemical process that happens, right? And this practice really taps us into and um, gets us familiar with this alchemical process that can come about. So, without further ado, if you need to shift the position that you're sitting in, you can shift your position. Moving the pillow underneath, adjusting the way you're sitting, doing any last moment stretching. Maybe looking around the space, getting yourself oriented. Maybe taking a couple deep breaths. And when you feel ready and able, allow your body to settle where it is. And finding to the degree that you can some, some degree of comfort of the daybreak and the eyelids of morning and the wayfaring moon and the night when it departs. I swear I will not dishonor my soul with hatred, but offer myself humbly as a guardian of nature, as a healer of misery as a messenger of wonder, as an architect of peace. In the name of the sun and its mirrors, and the day that embraces it, and the cloud veils drawn over it, and the uttermost night, and the male and the female, and the plants bursting with seed and the crowning seasons of the firefly and the apple. I will honor all life, wherever and in whatever form it may dwell, on earth my home, and in the mansions of the stars. Breathing that in. Earth our home, we live on together. All amongst the mansions of the stars. And your eyes have been closed for this practice. I want you to very slowly begin to open them. This for now. And perhaps doing any stretching if needed, shifting positions. Yeah. Also reorient by looking around the space. So, I think that I asked before, but has anybody ever practiced a tong, done a tonglen practice before? Yeah. This is a, a little slightly different interpretation of it. Um, 
But um, I think that these types of practices where we're playing with providing support in the form of love and compassion and also, you know, touching into, finding ways that we can touch into the things that are challenging are going to be especially important right now. Um, and meditation is one of those types of practices that really, really, really helps with this. Um, I was um, one, one meditation teacher, <laughs> one, one teacher of the Dharma, um, who really inspires me and who uses Tonglen a lot. Um, it's Pema Chodron. And as I was coming here this evening, um, as I was preparing over the last few days, um, I picked up one of her books that I haven't read in a really long time. Maybe some of you know it, uh, When Things Fall Apart. <laughs> this felt very, very fitting. She's like, yes, <laughs> this, this is what I need to read right now. Um, and it just feels so relevant everything that I read in there. And I found myself flipping to looking at the titles of the chapters. And I especially paid attention to the chapter on chaos. It's like, oh yeah, okay, this is going to be, this is going to be really rich. <laughs> this is going to be really nice. Um, so we're going to be talking about when things fall apart and what Pema Children's recommendations are, kind of within the context of a few practical tools and practice, practical um, observances that she recommends um, and how this really does kind of beautifully illustrate and encapsulate this idea of dancing with challenge. How can we stick with it? How can we see the challenges that we face as this kind of dance partner? Breathe with it, dance with it. Um, so I'm gonna read a quote from this book maybe a kind of a few other things but she said things falling apart is a kind of testing and also a kind of healing we think that the point is to pass the test or to overcome the problem but the truth is that things don't really get solved they come together and they fall apart they come together again and they fall apart again it's just like that. The healing comes from letting there be room for all of this to happen. Room for grief, for relief, for misery, for joy. Right. I read that and I <laughs> had to sit with it for a while. I thought, whoa, okay, yes, this is it. This is it. Being with life in all of its facets, right? And that having and being with the full expression of life, the good, the bad, everything in between, that really is the joy of living, the true joy of living. Can we be with it all? And we can explore this process through practice, through meditation. So ultimately, we don't sit and meditate and do this thing to become good med meditators. That would be kind of senseless in a way. Like, I'm going to learn how to sit still and to, like, train my mind to stay really still. No, it's because of how it impacts us outside of here. I mean, if you've been practicing for any length of time, has it changed the way that you see the world? Right? Has it changed the way that you act? Right? That's the point. The point is we meditate so that we can touch into and feel into all of the facets of what it means to be alive and be human. And the full range of it, being able to be with the full range of it, is aliveness, right? It doesn't mean happiness all the time. It doesn't mean that like, oh, this and not that, right? Like it's like, I pay attention to all this, all this happy, joy, bliss, yes, 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 that stuff. Like, we need to also say, like, oh, and there's despair, and there's anger, and there's disillusionment. Like, it's both and. It's both and. Like, holding both of it, both of those things, um, not easy. Not easy, but important. And, and the reason that we do practice. 
And one of the things that um, she mentions in, in this chapter on chaos is that um, whether we perceive any situation as heaven or hell depends on our perception. Right? And probably heard something similar to this before, but, but I just think that it's such a simple yet profound way of putting it that the two extremes, heaven or hell, really depends on our perception of it, how we can show up. Now, you might say like, oh, that's, that's, all, that's all great, <laughs> right? Like, but that's not easy to do. And are there any ways to kind of open up to experiencing that? So I have some good news for you. Pema Chodron, she gives us some, some very clear recommendations for how you can kind of be in that dance, dancing with challenge. Um, and it really does kind of um, represent what I mentioned of these two like polar opposite within this range, this deep rest and active hope and kind of everything in between. Um, so she gives three very practical recommendations. And these are recommendations that help us to deal with working with chaos, with difficulty, with uncertainty, with unwanted events in our lives. Has anybody like not experienced <laughs> any of those things? Right? Like we, we all have, we all have. Um, so regardless of what is going on and what you're experiencing currently, this is, this is helpful, helpful advice. Um, so the first method is no struggle. Right? She just purely says no struggle, that we open up to what is there, that we kind of don't find this kind of craving moving toward or this pushing away this aversion. These kind of dualities that live within the Buddhist tradition describe our relationship with things. Um, that whatever arises, we look at it in a non-judgmental way. That we're able to just say like, ah, that there, okay. Yep, and that too, that's, that's happening. That's happening. She describes it as kind of the primary way of working with any difficult or painful situations. Like being able to kind of be more of the observer and hold it in spaciousness rather than being so active and engaging and pushing away or kind of pulling it in. That we really start by working with these, what might be called monsters in our minds, right? Um, that we kind of find a way of being in dialogue with, with the monsters that tend to show up. And notice there are external circumstances, but we also like, it's always in relationship with and interpreted by what's happening in here, right? By what is happening in here. And we can be in conversation with what's happening in here. Right? And we can choose to be in a different relationship with it, to even be kind and extend our hand to the things that scare us, to the things that might feel like monsters. The second method that Pema Chodron recommends is to um, use chaos, to use difficulty as, um, they use this poison and go through this alchemical process of transforming it into medicine. Like, we take the poison, we make it into medicine. We use it for our own growth. We use it to do good in our own lives and, and out in the world. That the poison can actually be a catalyst. That the poison can be fuel for us waking up. So the first method mentioned is kind of like no struggle opening up. I really see that as kind of what deep rest allows us to do. That we pause enough, that we open enough so that we can be open to what is there. Like that really is the first step. Can we be with what is there? Can we sit with it? But then, like once we would do, we can like, we can work with it. It's like, okay, now like I can sit with it. I can be here and, and now like, maybe it's time to roll up our sleeves to see like, yep, that's the poison. I'm gonna work with the poison. I'm going to make it into medicine. Like, what can I do, right? How can I cultivate hope? How can I use that hope to move out and to do good in the world? Like, that could be a potential way of working with it. So what do I do now? How do 
I dance with that now? How does it help me to wake up? How do I use this poison, this thing that I'm perceiving as poison as a, like a seed for compassion and openness, being with? It's a lot of what we were doing with the Tonglen practice, kind of holding it close, using that poison, transforming the poison into sending out into peace and healing and moving it out into the world, transformed. Um, and the idea is that like, through this process, we recognize our common humanity and that we all obviously like we don't wish to suffer. Like, and so we want to be free from suffering, but knowing that we're not alone and that our suffering does connect us with others, that we wish for the peace and healing of all. That we have compassion, that the suffering with opens us up to working in the world and showing up in the world on behalf of all. And the third recommendation that Pema Chodron mentions is um, that we can choose to see whatever arises as a kind of enlightened wisdom. That the world gives us what is needed for our own awakening, right? That it can become this kind of enlightened wisdom Really, the essence of it is like, okay, yes, and how can I use this? Right? How is this my teacher? That is really the essence of the question. Right? Yes, I'm allowing myself deep breaths to be with. I'm allowing myself to see the poison as an opportunity to be able to act, to have an active hope in the world. And I also like this is taking it one step further. This is when you become like a master of the dance, dance with the challenge. It's like, yep. And I just know that what comes my way, right, is an opportunity for me to grow, is an opportunity for, for me to wake up, to become more alive, to be more engaged in my life and in this world. And recognize that ultimately this life Everything in this life, everything is uncertain. That we don't know what's going to come. But to have that malleability, that flexibility, that openness with that, again, easier said than done. But we can, in little ways, cultivate that desire to engage with it in that way more and more. That we're kind of doing this composting of what comes our way for our own enlightenment. Now, to me, that feels kind of empowering. I don't know about you, but that feels kind of empowering. It doesn't sound easy. It doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun, even. But it feels like, yes, I'm now in a, an empowered role with that kind of framing, with that kind of engagement. So that's a lot of, lot of talking. Um, I hope that it feels as inspiring as it felt to me when I was looking, when I was reading through it. And I would love to hear from, from you. Um, the questions that really are arising for me are, how do, you, how do you personally let go of any resistance that you're having towards things that are showing up in life? How do you turn poison into medicine? What are the methods that, that have been effective for you, but also, you know, what are, what are the methods that you kind of hope to cultivate? Like what, is, what is your relationship with, with difficulty, with challenge? How do, you, how do you resist it? And how do you seek to kind of open up to it and be in this process with it? Anybody have any thoughts? This life, they're always gonna come. Yeah. And they're always gonna go away. Yeah. So, you know, it's just it's just being able to sit with that long enough and know that you know, it's gonna pass. Um, yeah. Just say stay over here. Yeah. Uh, don't want to think that life is passing. Yeah. Be able 
wasted my time. Yeah. And I think that's that's kind of helped me in through healing. Um, we've talked here before about my, my feminist and my trans and my you know, my not Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's the way I move through at least trying to move through uh, difficult times and chaos. Yeah. Um, knowing very well that as I get older, uh, more difficult times and just in general the elders around me passing and so yeah you know it's just comes a lot yeah um, so yeah um thank you very much for the meditation of course and, uh, it's the very end of that yes and where is that from so the poem diane ackerman okay yeah yes that's yeah beautiful. Thank beautiful you. poet yeah thank you so much yeah thanks for sharing ackerman ackerman, ackerman. yeah So open to anyone online. <coughs> yeah, I think it's someone's raising their hand. Oh, yeah. yeah, hi, thank you. Hi. You're welcome. Um, so I think for me it's just an ongoing practice. Um, I've been jokingly calling it for the ongoing situation um, <laughs> and um, to uh, try to have the strength to look for the teaching in the difficulty. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. I just have to kind of, you know, have some moments to cry yeah. about it or whatever it might be. But yeah, for me, it's just, and trying to lean into or find ways to have gratitude even in difficult situations. Yeah. Yeah. So wonderful. That's Thank what you. works for me. Yeah. Wonderful. It's beautiful. Yeah. You know, what you're describing as well is, um, you know, what I would describe as, as deep breaths, allowing ourselves to like be in that state of like open feeling. Like, yeah, this is here. I need to cry. Like, I just need to, I just need to breathe. I need to be here. Right, we need that too. And um, I'll, I'll mention that we are going to do an, another practice once we're, and we feel complete with sharing. And this, the practice that will culminate our session tonight with, is going to be about deep rest. It's going to be about kind of like, ah, the exhale, the releasing into, the giving ourselves, maybe even like, a break it might feel like a break or just an opportunity to be open and feel what's there thank you so much for sharing yeah anybody else want to say something <laughs> um, i wanted to say thank you for the practice that was a really beautiful meditation i really enjoyed it and um, i really like the embodiment of the smile and um, sort of touching into the pain just in the body that really helped me sort of uh, be with sort of the fear and anxiety, um, yeah. gave me a place to really feel it, and not in a, in a sad, emotional kind of way, but mm -hmm. in just sort of a physical one that I could be with without awesome. you know, it being too tender, so that was really sweet. And, Great. Uh, something else you said, too, that I've been thinking of lately, I think, is sort of just the view of the meditation has been really helpful for me mm -hmm. during this time. Mm -hmm. um, and just holding that sort of sky, I think you mentioned like the skylight view and yeah. the skylight mind. I feel like that has been really beneficial for me to work through some of these struggles, the chaos, the, yeah. the hurt. Um, and so yeah, thank you. Thank you. And that's it, but it was, it was really, really wonderful. And I do really Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. If if you want, I can send it out to everyone. <laughs> it's like for those of you who, who, who are here, like, oh, we'll send it out. Yeah. 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 Like I really, you know, I could really feel a lot in my throat, and it was nice to have the invitation to like push into that and to, um, it was a 
feeling and place of you at this moment. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Um, felt like a much uh, easier to a much gentler version of Tonglen that I'm used to. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> yes, intended and, to be so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and so so it's something I always get something out of it when I do it, um, but I only ever do it and when it come happens. It, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I never do it on my own. Yeah. I, I don't seek out. Tonglen, <laughs> because I'm not the image, the visualization of the black smoke and you know mm -hmm. this kind of thing is difficult for me. And I, yeah. I, but this makes me really want to practice. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I, I loved it. I, I, I love your encouragement of mapping because that's one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. I'm yeah. not. I'm not hard on myself about mapping. I'm very clear. But um. But the um. I think just letting uh, things happen mm. recently. Um, I was in a retreat, not a meditation retreat, but a school retreat last weekend, and I had I had lots of difficult emotions come yeah. up, like a, a series of things. Yeah. And you know, because I've been learning about you know how to you know from meditation classes and from that class, I, I, I got to just sit be with those mm. you know not to amazing you know to just sit and be with them until mm. I like the dogs <laughs> and, until you know they transformed and I got information mm -hmm. uh, and I, I learned something yeah. from them so at first they were different with icky and oh I don't want to I just want to change this but I didn't you know and, and time after time um, three times <laughs> <laughs> They were transformative. Yeah. I was turning poison in, in medicine, yeah. you know, it, on the spot. Wonderful. And um, and I know there's intention for me around all this, but it just it does feel like it's just happened. Sometimes it just yeah. feels like this is this is how how things are unfolding. You're so welcome. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. And that's how it will happen is that we do the practice so that we kind of surprise ourselves like, oh, I wasn't even trying. And look what happened. Like I can now I can be with the emotions that are arising and I can be aware of that process that's happening. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I really have thought a lot about meditation. Um, two things sort of rising up for me. One is the idea of entropy, that mm -hmm. I feel the, the, the chaos of things sort of breaking apart. Yeah. Um, like the chaos of a sock drawer. If you clean <laughs> it up and then somehow there are missing socks in the drawer. But there's something about the meditation that I found so expansive mm. that I hadn't thought about before, mm. which is there's somebody else also suffering with struggling and I instantly felt connected to like the grander map of the universe in that mm. and when I think about my own suffering or when I acknowledge it and touch it and look at it and try to be curious about it it feels very lonely I feel yeah. very lonely so this was really helpful yeah yeah thank you you're so welcome thank you for sharing One thing I've noticed is that how I end up acting and feeling seems to matter or I with the whole elephant in the rider thing. Yeah. My body sometimes is very tired and in pain and sometimes it is not. Yeah. And that dominates every single thing about how I show up in the world. The, the, the deeper I get into this, the more I realize that. And so, 
meditation and practice has been less about controlling that and more about not making crap decisions when I am in a bad shape. Yeah. Like today I, I woke up and I was feeling in pain and tired and like an annoying thing happened at work. And I was very keenly aware that I was responding to it very differently than if it had happened yesterday. Hmm. And um, I feel like the biggest contribution of practice is that there is there was a time when I don't think I would have been aware of that. Interesting, yeah. And many other things, but that's what's salient for me. And thank you so much for this practice. I, oh, you're so welcome. I love the like dark horror of Tonglen, and I also love <laughs> the gentle, like beautiful, kind of warm way of doing this today as well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. It can be black smoke or other kinds of things too. Absolutely. You're so welcome. And thank you for sharing. And um, you know, I I feel you. Um, and it does like I have that. I'll say I personally have that experience too. Is that some days like I feel vibrant, I feel alive, and some days I wake up and I'm like, whose body is this? Or like, what what what's what's going on here? Um, and that's, I mean, it's everything to have an awareness of that and to be able to be with it, right? To be accepting of that, regardless of what it is. And so, so wonderful, so exciting, really, that practice has helped you to, to be there. Like, because we don't, have, we don't have control over what shows up. But we can have a say in how we respond, right? We can have a say in, what, in how we respond. And that really is kind of like all of it. Like all, all of the lessons encapsulated and things like, yes, we do have choice. We always do have choice. Things happen. We have a choice with how we respond. Beautiful. Please. Too. I've, I've just been, I've been struggling a lot, and a lot of people I've talked, I've been talking to say how uh, they haven't been following the news, mm -hmm. and I just have such a compulsion to, I have had to for my work too, yeah. reading, you know, the daily, daily uh, patterns books and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and um, just the implications, and I just can't get to, I've really been having a hard time, and maybe I'm just more memory than it is on an answer, but I feel like there's really hard to come to that acceptance, and to let go, and yes. And I don't think it helps to keep reading about it and obsessing about it, but I'm really having a hard time stopping. Yeah. Anyway, and, um, but I do love kind of shove it in my head that book by my bed and I yeah. kind of read it when I get home because yeah. I just haven't forgotten it. I haven't read it. Yeah, yeah same, same here. I thought, oh, this one. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is perfect. <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing. I mean, I I can relate to what you said. I can totally relate to it. It's 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 hard. It's tricky. It's really true. This situation is very tricky. Right. It feels like a dark time because a lot of people are really upset. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I hope not, but you know, yeah. 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 And and you're here, and and you're using your voice, and you're you're coming together in community, and that's not a small thing. That is not a small thing, and part of. You know, another support is coming together, not only just to practice on your own, but coming together in community, understanding and being, you know, allowing yourself to be vulnerable enough to share like, yeah, this actually is kind of, this, this kind of sucks. <laughs> like this is, this is kind of scary. Like, and, and to have that reflect back about like, oh yeah, yeah, I feel that too. Right. Like I can relate to that. Um. It kind of connects us back to this idea like we're not suffering alone right and that we can kind of come together that in and of itself is actually enough right it doesn't mean that we don't do anything it doesn't mean that we don't feel the things that we feel but at least we are, are held held by a community in that kind of understanding so i see you i see you i feel you yeah <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Yeah, OK. 
Okay, well, do we want to do one more practice? It's more focused on like, <sighs> like let's let's give ourselves a pause. Let's give ourselves some reprieve. So, as I mentioned, we do want to give ourselves permission to and open up to feeling all of the range of this, right? Mm -hmm. To feel to feel the things that maybe suck a little bit, um, to feel the things that are joyful, right? And to feel all of experience, but um, in order especially to show up for times that are challenging or difficult, we don't often give ourselves the fuel that is needed. The fuel that is needed to be able to continue to show up, especially when we're facing things that are chaotic, that are challenging, that are not pleasant, we need rest. We need rest. It is imperative. It is imperative and it is important. So we are going to do a practice of some rest and we'll do it through kind of body scan. This is going to be also like a different interpretation on a body scan meditation. Um, we'll do some progressive muscle relaxation. Um, and we'll kind of go through the body and what it involves. And we'll just do this together so that you can kind of practice it before we get into it. So take your hands out in front of you and make a fist. Just feel the tension in your fists. Feel the sensations that are arising with the fist. And I want to invite you to release the tension fully, expand your fingers out and even just relax them down onto your lap. Completely relaxing your hands. Just feeling the difference between that, that engagement, that tension, and pure relaxation. So this is what progressive muscle relaxation does, um, is that by juxtaposing between that kind of tension and tensing parts of your body and then releasing it fully, that we can allow our bodies, our bodies tends to sink a little bit deeper into relaxation as a result. Um, and we'll end with a little bit, I, I'm also a musician. I didn't mention this at, at the beginning. Uh, some of you um, maybe have been here for, for some of these sessions, but the practice will end with a little bit of a soothing song at the end. Yeah, so you'll hear my voice. So it's kind of be like a little bit of sound healing with my voice at the end. Um, and I want to invite you to even get into a different position than, than a sitting position. Like you can totally stay in a sitting position, but there is enough space for you to lie down. Yes, with blankets. Um, you could also, I'm going to show one other suggested option. So you could use a chair. I'll just show with my, my chair here. You could lie down on the floor, turn around, and bring your lower legs up onto the chair. So just watch. Into the deepest relaxation possible in the body. We'll move through the body in a kind of body scan, utilizing progressive muscle relaxation. We'll just touch on these briefly and then we'll sink into rest. So I invite you to find a little bit of tension or clenching in your jaw. Find a little bit of tension in your jaw. Hold on to it for a second, a few more seconds, and then release it fully, completely relaxing. You might even notice some space become, come between your teeth, your tongue relax. And I invite you to find some tension around your eyes. Like, imagine you're scrunching them up, like the muscles around your eyes. Finding a little bit of tension around your eyes and holding it for a few seconds, feeling the tension. And then release it fully, completely. Let it go. Feel the tension dripping off of you.
want you to find some tension wrinkling up your forehead, like finding some tension in the forehead. What does that feel like? Holding on to it so you can really feel that part of your body active, actively finding some tension. And then release it completely. Release. Spread. Soften and spread like a blanket. you to find some tension in your neck which if your head is touching the floor it might be pressing your head down into the floor it might be scrunching your chin down into your chest so finding some engagement some tension muscular tension in your neck holding on to it and then release it lengthen spread I'm feeling more space more length come into the neck and around the throat, opening, releasing. I invite you to find some tension around the shoulders. You might be shrugging your shoulders up or hugging in towards your midline. It's finding some muscular engagement, some tension in your shoulders holding on to it for a couple seconds longer and then releasing it completely, dropping down in, spreading, your shoulders heavy, supported. Coming into your upper arms, I invite you to find some tension in your biceps, your upper arms. You're finding some muscular engagement, some contraction, holding on to it for a few more seconds. Feeling tension, engagement. And then release it completely. Let it go. Let it go. Feel your breathing deepen. Feel your body soften. into your hands and fists. I invite you to make a fist with your hands. Kind of making it tight. Really engaging the muscles to create a fist. A strong fist. Holding it for a couple more seconds. And then release it completely. Letting it go. Your hands relax. Your hands soft all the way to the fingertips. I invite you to find some tension in your lower back. It might mean a little arching of your lower back. How you engage muscles in your low back. Find a little bit of tension, a little bit of engagement. And then release, letting it go. Spreading down in, finding release, finding rest. Moving into your buttocks, finding a little bit of engagement, a little bit of tension. Hugging in, holding for a few seconds, finding some tension, some engagement in your buttocks. And release completely. Moving to your thighs. Your thighs and upper legs finding some engagement, some tension in your thighs. Does it feel like you find engagement there? A little bit of muscular engagement, some tension, holding for a second longer, and release. Let it go completely, completely letting go. Moving to your calf muscles. And finding some muscular engagement there, which might involve 
pointing or flexing your ankles. Holding for a couple more seconds. And release. The drip off of you. All the tension gone. Release it. No longer needed. I invite you to find some tension in your feet and toes. A little bit of engagement, a little bit of scrunching perhaps of your toes, finding a little bit of tension, a couple more seconds longer. And release it completely. Feeling your whole body release down into support and support the surfaces that are holding your weight, the support of this community, support of your practice, making your breath calm and soft, feeling this release, this softness come from your feet What can you release more of? How can you soften from your feet, your lower legs, your upper legs softening, your pelvis and buttocks softening, spreading? Your whole torso softening, melting, your upper chest, your shoulders, your arms, softening, melting, releasing, relaxing, through your fingertips, through your neck, softening, resting, your head, your eyes, your mouth and jaw releasing, resting, melting. Until your body feels so relaxed. Perhaps even the sensation of weightlessness supported and here, doing the good work of deep rest. As you settle in here for a little while longer, allowing yourself to be in deep rest and supported by some soothing sounds Hearing the sound of my voice. It's a little lullaby. The light of the sun. As it filters through, reveals the truth of existence. When I slow
Keeping your bodies relaxed here together, allowing yourselves to linger in relaxation, in rest. Taking it slow, you as you're ready to begin to feel awareness come back to the surface. Do give yourself permission to take as much time as needed to transition out of the position that you're in, up to seated, and maybe eventually standing. This is how we'll end our session this evening. It's really cultivating deep breaths and maybe allowing that to carry us into some sleep, some deep sleep this evening, some deep restful sleep. And I thank you all so, so very much for being here with me.
engaging in this rich conversation and these very important practices. Yeah. Taking all the time you need to come up and out. 